the focus of this stream is going to be my strategy for getting out of this cycle of highly supportive footwear in a gradual, healthy way to get you back more towards natural. Unless you were raised with uh, like hippie parents that had you running around barefoot your entire childhood and you kind of stuck with it, you've probably fallen into this kind of lifestyle of wearing like, you know, New Balance or Nike or, or whatever these shoes are that have cushion on the bottom and they have raised heels and uh, something called toe spring, even though it doesn't really make a lot of sense because you think, ah, oh, cushion is better, like cushion under your heels, less shock for your spine, right? The way that the body feels best is through a strong connection to the earth, feeling what's underneath you. And when you put cushion underneath you, you have a decreased sensation, decreased proprioception would be the medical term of what you're connecting to. In addition, it's the same, it's repetitive. You're landing on the same con weird shaped contour over and over and over again, instead of maybe there's a different like angles of the ground that you're landing on when you're barefoot or wearing barefoot footwear and that variety as we talked about in the sitting stream the variety is the healthiest thing for our body the variety of the things that you're landing on and the way that your foot lands and and forms and and that does not lead to repetitive trauma. My name is Dr. Ryan Peebles. I am a physical therapist by profession. I've dedicated the last 20 years of my life to better understanding and reversing the root causes of chronic lower back pain. And if I had a second specialty after lower back pain, it would be the feet. And it's precisely because I've had an issue with my feet. Um, both feet at different times in my life and uh, I relate it all back to the muscle imbalances that I teach about. By the way, I don't have foot problems anymore. You know, I made the mistakes myself and had to learn from them. Uh, that's why I'm wanting to relay them to you so you can learn from my mistakes. You know, I went to extremely supportive footwear. This is a custom orthotic, really hard uh, bottom and it's extremely high arch. Um, very cushiony insert on top of the cushion of the shoes. I went that direction. Yeah, it feels good initially, but after a couple months, you after you've adapted to this, the benefits start to subside, and then you're just farther away from natural, and and it becomes a cycle. So you need even more support. It's like a tolerance you build up, and so what we want to do is the reverse. We want to gradually reduce the amount of support and distance from barefoot that a shoe is giving us and do it in a way that does not make our body go crazy. So if you have uh, back pain and you also have uh, foot problems and you don't believe they're related, wow, a bird just flew in here. Holy cow, look at that, can you guys see that? All right, he's safely out of the office. So the same issues that cause lower back problems and neck problems and hip problems also affect your feet too. And so that's why I've spent a lot of time studying the feet. So my goal today is to uh, relay some of the most helpful information that I've found over the years to you, uh, to help you and put the best thing on your feet for uh, getting out there and walking, which is really good for your back. My strong opinion is that the absolute best thing you could put on your feet is nothing. Barefoot is the most natural way to get around, uh, is the way that we were designed. And if you know anything about the strategy of core balance training, it is modeled after human development, after human design. We are modeling the way that we connect with our bodies and our core with the way that infants and babies develop the most natural possible way. And so yes, it would make sense that I believe the most natural, healthiest way to walk around is with the things that you were designed with. I have to give a strong warning to you that if you currently wear supportive footwear, that you should not switch to barefoot abruptly. That is a recipe for your body to go haywire. This is my wife's shoe. It has all of the things that bring us far away from being barefoot. You can see the heel is raised up 
and uh, so that lifts our heel and shortens our Achilles tendon and our calf muscle and it has an effect on the muscular balance of our legs and that goes up the chain. Um, it also has pointed toes. Our feet are not shaped like this. So it's scrunching your toes together towards the front and it doesn't uh, allow for toe spread. Bunions actually are one of the most misunderstood things. So like right here, you'd get the bunion. It's not actually a growth. What happens is your big toe, as it's, it's supposed to be going straight out, as it gets pushed inward, what happens to the base of the big toe? It goes outward. And so you can imagine if my thumb were the big toe, that bunion is actually right here is a result of the toe getting squeezed inward by the shoe and footwear in my opinion is the main cause of bunions and so if i and i started to, to develop them on my own feet i wore basketball shoes for you know my entire childhood so if i had a bunion which i've had started developing what i would start working on is toe spreading and and you gotta also do that gradually so if you were ever to wear something like these toe spreaders, you cannot just throw them on, wear them all day long. You throw them on for 15 minutes and walk around and then take them off. Even if they feel good, you take them off. And then the next time, maybe 20 minutes. And then the next time, maybe 21 minutes. It's got, the gradual is the best, most effective, beneficial way you can go with feet. That's uh, how you can at least partially reverse a bunion by getting that toe spread back. Uh, it also has something called toe springs. This space right here between the toe and the flat surface is called toe spring. Shoes, almost all shoes will come up here and that uh, lifts your toes up off the ground. Well, like, why does that happen, right? Like our toes are kind of, when we're barefoot, our toes are on the ground. Why do you want to lift our toes? Well, that's so we don't trip over things. Maybe it's a, uh, they're trying to avoid lawsuits, but it affects the way our, we land on the ground. It, it pushes the, the pressure um, farther back onto the ball of your foot and it has an impact up the chain. Lots of shoes have tons of cushion, you know, in the sole. This particular shoe doesn't, but Brooks, tons of cushion. You can see there's heel drop here. This will be farther away from walking barefoot. Pretty much five different aspects of a shoe that take us away from being barefoot. And my best strategy for getting towards what my belief is the best footwear, which is either nothing or minimalist shoes and we're going to later we're going to go through a bunch of barefoot style minimalist shoes um, and i'll make some recommendations um, but my best strategy is to either the expensive way is to purchase a new pair of shoes that is closer to minimalist such as a company like merrill or um, that, I, I feel like that that's a pretty well-known brand where they're like not fully minimalist or barefoot but they're closer to it and wear those for a few months and then go to the next step of a company that's even closer um, like Nike Freeze those ones there they're they're kind of like closer to barefoot and then a few months of that and then go to the next stage which is uh, full minimalist footwear that's the expensive way because you got to buy a bunch of new shoes. The cheapest way is to either you could start just buy your minimalist shoes or your barefoot pair of shoes now and then replace the insert with uh, supportive inserts. And so you can just get have a series of inserts that are less supportive that gradually over a period of like six months reduce the support of your foot back down to whatever the normal insert for the shoe is. And, and this is something I've done. I've had a lot, I, I told you I have a history of foot problems. Here's some of my inserts that I have collected over the years. You know, I bought each one of these genuinely to use them. So there's my proof that I have had foot problems. The cheaper way to do this is buy a barefoot style footwear, which we'll talk about a bunch of styles, and then have some inserts that gradually reduce, reduce you down like six months. like maybe switch your insert every three months and get back down towards uh, reduced support. You have to gradually build your foot tolerance up and the little tiny muscles in your feet up to be able to have the resilience to do that. And that takes a long time to do. What adverse effects might happen if you go too fast? So many things go can go wrong. And that's why I say hay haywire, because it's like the, the body can react by 
having knee pain, uh, hip pain, lower back pain. I, I believe even neck pain can result from uh, having a drastic change, like if you wore these every day and your, your heel cord, your Achilles tendon is basically a heel cord, is used to having th being this far off the ground, an inch and a half off the ground, and then you drop down to something like this, and your muscular balance is not adapted to that, definitely affects the whole chain, and, and at the very least, it will impact your feet. So I think the first place that you'll feel problems is your feet. And if you go do, were to make a change like that, I would imagine you would get plantar fasciitis, which is just inflammation of the fascia on the bottom of the foot. Um, a major change in the length tension relationship in that fascia will irritate it because everything that we're doing on our feet is repetitive. And so you're repetitively stretching something significantly more without having it gradually adapt to that uh, will cause micro trauma. Later we're going to go through a bunch of barefoot style minimalist shoes um, and I'll make some recommendations. If you enjoyed the stream, hit the like button, help YouTube spread the word 